Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. We begin following the breaking news out of Afghanistan today. Explosions outside the Kabul airport this morning killed more than a dozen people, including United States Marines. Officials say other American military members are among the wounded. We have the latest now in our top story at five. U.S. officials say a suicide bomber affiliated with the group ISIS is responsible for an explosion that killed 12 U.S. service members, including 11 Marines and a Navy medic. Fifteen more were injured in this attack by the group ISIS-K. There are also a number of additional reported attacks, and at least 60 Afghans have been killed. President Joe Biden tonight has vowed to avenge these deaths. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. President Biden also says the evacuations will continue in Afghanistan. South Dakota Governor Christine Nome tonight released a statement on these attacks saying as more information is being learned, one thing will remain clear that, quote, these attacks are a result of the Biden administration's reckless failure to secure the situation before withdrawing our troops, end quote. Lawmakers tasked with investigating that January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol are issuing a sweeping records request tonight across several government agencies. They're demanding all communications between the White House, allies of former President Donald Trump, and even congressional lawmakers leading up to that riot. The panel is now made up of seven Democrats and two anti-Trump Republicans. Meanwhile, an inmate who confessed in court to using a hammer to kill a nurse and a correctional officer during an escape attempt at an Iowa state prison has been sentenced to life in prison. Thomas Woodard Jr. was sentenced Thursday after pleading guilty earlier this month to two counts of first-degree murder, as well as to kidnapping and attempted murder counts. Prosecutors say Woodard and his co-defendant, 29-year-old Michael Dutcher, carried out the March 23rd hammer attacks at the Anamosa State Penitentiary on the people on your screen, 50-year-old Lorena, Lorena Schulte, she was a nurse, and 46-year-old correction officer Robert McFarland. Woodard also admitted to bludgeoning an inmate who tried to stop that attack and briefly holding another female employee as a hostage. South Dakota's attorney general has pled no contest to a pair of misdemeanor charges, this in the death of a pedestrian last year, avoiding a trial that was set to begin today. Jason Brownsburg entered the plea Thursday to charges of making an illegal lane change and using a phone while driving. Each charge carries a sentence of up to 30 days in jail and up to a $500 fine. As part of his plea deal now, prosecutors dropped a careless driving charge against the state's highest law enforcement officer. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem says she believes Roundsburg should resign, and if not, the legislature should consider an impeachment. Roundsburg says he plans to stay in office, though, in a statement, criticize the media for, quote, reporting many untrue and misleading things, end quote. He also said partisan opportunists manufactured rumors and conspiracy theories. We have the full statement available for you to read online if you'd like at SiouxlandProud.com or the KCAU 9 mobile news app. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln tonight is suspending operations at a fraternity house during an investigation into an alleged sexual assault. For two nights in a row, hundreds of students have protested outside of the Phi Gamma Delta or Fiji fraternity house. University police there say that assault was reported early on Tuesday. Japan tonight is suspending use of roughly 1.63 million doses of the Moderna vaccine. This after a contaminant was found in some unused vials. The health ministry there says the contamination was reported at multiple vaccination sites. Some doses might have been administered, but no adverse health effects have been reported as of now. The doses were produced in the country of Spain, and the Spanish company says it was investigating the matter. The Japanese distributor has asked Moderna to investigate the problem. Japan is relying on three foreign developed vaccines for its COVID-19 inoculation campaign. The price of oil fell for the first time this week amid growing concerns the Delta variant could stall a full-fledged reopening of the economy. Crude oil down 37 cents today, U.S. oil down 50 cents. 
Time now to turn our attention to the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. Scott, uh, I don't know if you were up early enough this morning, but if you heard some of those storms passing through the, the Sioux City area and most of Siouxland, we really finally got some rain. We did, yeah. Quite a few rumbles of thunder out there this morning, Sophie, associated with a line of severe thunderstorms which passed through Sioux City right around 7 o'clock today. As we review the radar through the past 12 hours, you can see that intense line of thunderstorms which blew through through and then some additional rain which formed right along Highway 20. Right now we're in a lull in the activity but there could be some additional storms flaring up here as we go through tonight. You can see some of that rain continuing to occur toward Fort Dodge and another thin strip of storms out toward O'Neill. Rain amounts pretty substantial out there over a half an inch for many and again there is that possibility of seeing some more severe weather happen for tonight. We'll have the latest updates in the full 9 on 9 forecast in a few minutes. Sophie. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Did you know a power lifter right here in Siouxland holds multiple world records? He's now training the next generation of lifters and giving back to his community. You'll meet him now and find out his inspiration behind the iron in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. Big Iron Gym basically started out of Omaha, Nebraska um, by my coach, my friend, Rick Hussey. Uh, he started the gym and the powerlifting team. Uh, basically, I would drive there three days a week because he's one of the best coaches in the world, and I was into powerlifting at that time, and that, I felt pretty lucky and fortunate that it was only in Omaha to find the best trainer in the world. And it was the best trainer in the world that helped this man, Sean Frankel, secure world records. Because of him and my teammates, I was able to set two world records, um, which still stand today. One is in the 198-pound class. Um, my squat, I squatted 1,055, which is a world record. Um, I benched uh, 850, and I deadlifted 750 at that body weight. Those are the most I've did in, at that body weight. And then uh, there's a total that you get based off of that. Uh, my total is 2630 at 198, and that's a world record still today. Sean also holds the world record for the 220-pound class, but says it was his support system that helped give him the edge. I had a lot of people that helped me, so it's not like something I just could do on my own. And then Sean lost a key component of that network. Rick Hussey, the owner of Big Iron Gym, lost his battle with cancer. But he wanted to keep the gym going, and we had numerous conversations about that and how he wanted me to keep it going. It was a little bit hard for me having a family here in town to go to Omaha and do it. So I just opened up this one here, and it's just been a blessing. We've been able to help a lot of other people, not just in powerlifting, but just normal people that just want just general health weight loss, just staying in shape. Sean explains that he's building a legacy here in Siouxland of strength in body and in community spirit. We got some of the best members, best support system ever. I mean, like, it's really, it's honestly, I don't even look like it. I look at it my way like it's my gym. I look at it like it's another family to me. It's a group of people that we all help each other out, whether it's even inside or outside the gym. Everybody's willing to give a hand on, on anything that somebody's got going on. And coming up on the 20th anniversary of September 11th, Sean organized a powerlifting meet at the gym. And all the proceeds are going to go to the first responders. We wanted to do something where we're giving back to local people here in Siouxland. And we thought, what better thing to do? It's September 11th. We can hold a great powerlifting meet. We'll get a lot of people to show up. We're going to do some silent auction things. And like I said, all the proceeds, we're just going to give back. Something he says everyone should consider doing. Really, more than anything, it's just, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're doing in your life. Yeah, I'm the owner of Big Iron Gym, whatever. I just think whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, I mean, you could probably be used to give back in some sort of way. And I just challenge people, I don't care what gym you go to, I don't care what you're doing in your life, just give back. Because there's somebody always out there that probably needs it. And that's the culture he's working each day to instill in the members he trains at Big Iron Sioux City. Good, man. Just like that. And so it's kind of unique. It's not like your normal gym. People are always wanting to help, and that's what makes the gym is the people. It's not the equipment. It's not the building. It's the people. That's what makes the gym. Now, if you would like to directly support this cause on September 11th coming up, you're asked to contact the gym directly at the number listed in this story on our website. That's at SiouxLandProud.com.
And for those looking to put work in on the job instead of at the gym, there was a career fair earlier today. It was held by Iowa Works. Some Siouxland businesses say they've experienced a boost in applications. One employer, however, tells us that despite daily applicants, it is still difficult to find enough workers who can fill certain shifts. Here, Wire Recruiter thinks there are so many open positions here in Siouxland. In our digital exclusive story right now on our website, again, that's SiouxlandProud.com, or click that story on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. Well, they are rolling with the punches, but not without throwing a few of their own. How two young champions are taking on the boxing world coming up in just nine minutes. And we've had a few uh, showers and thunderstorms roll through the area today. It looks like some additional ones will be lining up here as we go through tonight. It'll become cooler next week, a seasonal start to the month of September. Your 9 on 9 forecast right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. was cheering on the rain early this morning. So excited we got something measurable. We desperately needed it. I'm sure no one cheering more though tonight than the farmers. Absolutely, uh, Sophie. I think a lot of people happy to see uh, some meaningful rain happen in Siouxland today. We'll loop through the past 12 hours here on the radar loop and you can see that we did have those really powerful thunderstorms blow through Sioux City right around six, seven o'clock this morning. As those continued to advance to the east, there were some severe thunderstorm warnings that were issued along that boundary. You can also to see that we had an additional flare-up of some rain happen right along Highway 20 this afternoon. Most of that has now peeled off and fallen apart, but we are keeping an eye on this further development off to the west. As you can see, that we're, we get a break on Sunday with some very pleasant weather, a high of 81 and a mostly sunny sky. And once we get past Monday, it looks like we'll have dry conditions once again with high temperatures in the low to mid 80s for the most part. But as we get into next weekend, we could see those temperatures fall further into the 70s. Well, here's a look at some storm cloud uh, that occurred out in uh, Iowa. This was near Highway 12. Thanks to our viewer for passing in this picture. If you have one of your own that you want to share, go to SiouxlandProud.com, find the weather tab, and send us your photos. Yeah, we've had such a fair weather photos lately. Nice to have a few uh, storm clouds peppered in there. Yeah, we've had, uh, you know, just a lot of sunrises and sunsets for the most part, but should get some more active pictures soon. Right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, New Yorkers and tourists alike are flocking to Times Square all to go have a temporary ride on the Ferris wheel. Wheel there. Look at that. What they think of the ride coming up in about seven minutes. But first, the next generation of boxers just getting started. They have a whole career planned out already, though. What drives them to keep fighting next? Two Kansas kids are taking the fighting world by storm after their performances at the Junior Olympics. They now have their sights set for the biggest stage of them all. Pat McGonagall explains. <laughs> You are looking at the second-ranked 13-year-old boxer in his weight class in the entire USA. Melvin Wesley Jr. is a menace in the ring, which is why his sunny disposition and technical approach to his craft catches you off guard. It's a mind game. It's a mind, what do you mean? It's a mind game. It's like a game of chess. Okay. You don't hit and not get hit. You could say Melvin hit the big time last month after walking away with a gold medal at the Junior Olympics in Lubbock, Texas. His dad runs the gym where he trains, Pound for Pound Elite Boxing Academy in Lenexa. I'm more nervous for them when they fight than I was when I was fighting myself. So, but it's beautiful, man. Another gold medal winner here, 12-year-old Nasir Clinton. He's dealing with newfound fame at school. My first day at school, like I went in the class, like I went to go get my schedule to go to the classroom, and it was just like, it was like, oh, here goes our boxing champion right here, and I didn't even know that they knowed, and then, like, it was just, like, just crazy. The life of a boxer can be short, but Melvin Wesley Jr. already has the rest of his life planned out. My dream is to qualify for the Olympics, win the gold medal, and then I want to turn pro. And once I turn pro, I want to be the best fighter there is, and I want to be undisputed in three weight classes. And then when I'm, like, 38, I'll retire, something like that. Nasir, meanwhile, says he'll never retire. So you're going to keep fighting until they tell you you have to stop? Yeah, I'm going to fight until my bones give out. Brave kids. Well, Ferris wheels have a lot of nostalgia for some people, and now there's one right in the heart of New York for those nostalgic of a pre-pandemic Times Square. More on the big attraction and the Big Apple next. Nothing says summer quite like a ride on a Ferris wheel, and luckily for New Yorkers, an 11-story Ferris wheel just opened up right in the middle of Times Square. ABC's Will Gans went to check it all out for us.
You've seen the London Eye, you know the Singapore Flyer, and maybe you've ridden the Las Vegas High Roller. But at long last, the Big Apple has a big attraction of its own. This is the Times Square Wheel. How are you guys with heights? Uh, he was a little scared. Uh, well, no, I was not. I was no <laughs> fear at all. Right in the middle of Broadway, a brand new Ferris wheel. Times Square is the center of the world. An empty Times Square was symbolic of the pause and the pandemic. And a Ferris wheel in Times Square is symbolic of our resolve and our recovery. These days, about 200,000 people passing through Times Square. But the goal? To get closer to the 375,000 pre-pandemic numbers. Kind of brought us here, gave us a reason to come here and like see one of the coolest places. Each ride lasting about 10 minutes. I really went for Instagram and some TikToks. 110 feet above Broadway with southbound views into Times Square Canyon. You can see the New Year's Eve ball right behind me. It's a once in a lifetime view. And let's be honest, a once in a lifetime selfie opportunity too. The Times Square wheel arrived on trucks from Texas last week and was constructed in time to open Wednesday. I'm a little bit afraid of heights, but it, I felt very secure. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> That's always good. When you're 110 feet off the ground, you it's nice to be <laughs> We take a live look outside right now We're in Cherokee with a sunny but cloudy night. Scott returns with one more check on our forecast, so don't go away. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good Thursday afternoon, Sophie. You know, riding a school bus to class each day is a necessity for some families. We'll take a closer look at that coming up today. Left with no other option, some people just have to take a school bus to get to the classroom. And kids uh, today facing some challenges as there is a shortage of school bus drivers. We'll take a closer look coming up at 6. Elsewhere, a Council Bluffs mother is suing the state over a law that bans schools from ordering a face mask to be worn as a way to protect students against COVID-19. We'll take a closer look at that as well coming up at 6. And up next on World News Tonight, latest details from Afghanistan where at least a dozen U.S. servicemen have died. Servicemen and women, I should say, have died in the last uh, several hours as the conflict there continues trying to get folks out of that nation. That's coming up on World News. We'll see you at 6. All right, thanks so much, Tim. We'll see you then for the latest on that. And uh, as those storms move out today, or moved out, it does feel uh, like it cooled down a little bit, Scott. Slightly out there, so if you were seeing our temperatures fall into the 70s, we find ourselves between two systems at the moment. Some more storms beginning to form to our west. There is a risk of seeing severe weather as we move through tonight. All right, thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again here at 6. Until then, have a great night.